Hello everyone and a very happy new year to all of you. This of course will be the first upload on this channel for 2023. And what we're talking about in this video is this jacket we have on the mannequin here. This is a, an East German police field jacket, obviously in the strict tarn camouflage. Most commonly associated with the Volkspolizeibereitschaft, which is the ready forces of the Volkspolizei, the East German police force. The Bereitschaft Polizei were primarily intended for use in public order situations, basically as riot police. From a policing point of view, they were in fact a paramilitary force and would have been involved in internal security and so forth. Had war broken out, they were trained as infantry and they had various heavy weapons you would not normally see in a police formation. So quite an interesting unit from that point of view. So that's what we have here, the insignia and so forth we're going to talk about relates to the, the Volkspolizei Bereitschaft. The uniform itself basically follows the pattern of the 1980s NVA or National Volks Army combat uniform, field uniform, in the way it's laid out, the pocket uh, layout and so forth on this. Obviously it's made in the standard Strixtown camouflage, uh, the standard by this time. This is a very late 1980s production example and from my understanding made specifically for the police. There are various features which mark this out as a police issue example and the some of the specifics of the manufacture were uh, peculiar to the Volkspolizei. So we're going to talk about that in the course of the video. In terms of the front of the uh, jacket here you can see we have the two breast pockets and we have the two lower pockets as well, the two hip pockets down here which was typical for the field jackets manufactured from around 1980 onwards. As you'll see, we have concealed buttons on the arm pockets as well, all features which have been introduced to the standard field jacket issued to both the MVA and other forces from around 1980 onwards. One of the things that mark this, marks this particular jacket out as different is the buttons, and they are quite a peculiar design to this particular jacket. There were also trousers made with these as well. They are riveted in place, similar to the buttons you would see on jeans uh, or denim, denim jeans. So they have a rivet at the back there. They are actually plastic, not metal, but they're, they're still made in gray plastic, but they're riveted in place. You can see the back of the rivet there. Obviously we'll see more detail of that as we turn this on inside out and have a look at the various features. The buttons on the pockets are also riveted. As you can see, they're the same design. And you can see that the pockets here the buttonholes are worked into this nylon or polyester fabric here, a very uh, thin mesh-like fabric that's also used for the lining in some instances and to make the bags of the pockets as well, as we'll see when we turn this inside out. So that's a peculiarity of this particular uniform, otherwise it's fairly typical of the 1980s field jackets that were being produced in East Germany. Looking at the right-hand side of the mannequin here, we can first of all see the one use of buttons which don't conform to this riveted design, and that is on the shoulder boards here. The old pebbled buttons are used. Obviously these attach using a cord that goes through two holes in the shoulder of the field jacket to attach the shoulder boards. These are shoulder boards for a Wachtmeister in the Volkspolizei Breitschaft. They are made in a subdued form. They're still very bright and colorful, but they are subdued compared to the full color shoulder boards used by the Volkspolizei. Looking at this close up, you can see there's a lighter green band around the outside of the shoulder board and a single lighter green bar towards the bottom. And this is in place of the silver with little green chevrons worked into it, which will be seen on the full colour shoulder boards. And for the Volkspolit Cyberite shaft, you've also replaced the band of green down the centre with a much darker green on the full colour shoulder boards. The poison green used on the outside and for the little bar on this example will be used for the centre section of the shoulder board. So these are somewhat subdued compared to the full colour shoulder boards. Moving down from the shoulder board, down the arm, we have a pocket here on the arm with concealed buttons. There's obviously one on the other side as well. And this is typical for 1980s manufactured field jackets, but it does again have the riveted buttons underneath, as you can see. So that's a, a differentiation there. It's peculiar to these very late field jackets manufactured for the Volkspolizei. If we lift up the arm here, one final thing to mention above the pocket, of course, is you do still have the little foliage loops worked in, there for attaching camouflage to the uniform. Interesting that they still exist on the design. Don't see them in use all that often, but still included there over the top of the pocket. That's what that little loop of cloth is for there. Moving on to talk about the cuff. We have a little uh, loop sewn on here, which allows you to button the cuff in. If I unbutton this, it's a little clearer to see. You can see the loop of cloth there sewn on. 
and then you have two buttons, one which will secure that if you're not using it, just secures it from flapping around, and then a second button there which allows you to draw the cuff in and secure that around the wrist, as you can see. Moving on to look at the back of the field jacket here, we can see another part of, I suppose, the insignia, you might say, and that is the fact we have Polizei stenciled across the back here, fairly crudely, in white paint. You can see it is a stencil. We've got the O there, bisected by the line showing where the stencil was. And this is fairly typical by 1990. You see this on most field jackets being used by Volks Polizei personnel at this time, obviously to mark them out as police. So this is lovely to have a, a jacket that's actually been marked up in this way. As mentioned, this is a very late production jacket. Around 1988, I believe, these were first introduced. So these wouldn't have seen much service, but this was common in 1990 to see the paint across the back of the jacket. So it's possible this actually saw use then. It's in very good condition, so it's possible it was stenciled up and just left in stores and wasn't actually issued out. That's also a possibility. But nevertheless, a very nice thing to have with this stencil across the back because this is a, an iconic part of the police uniform, the police field uniform, the very end of the uh, existence of East Germany as a state. I've turned this inside out now. I've turned the field jacket inside out so we can see the details of the internal construction here. And you can see running down the front here, we have that line of rivets holding the buttons on down the front. We have the bags for the internal pockets here. They're made of the same sort of mesh, nylon or polyester material. We saw used as a lining for the cuffs and so forth as well. You can see that there, we just have a very thin bag for the breast pockets there. And then the two hip pockets as well. The one on the right hand side as we're looking at it here is actually covered up with the pistol pocket. Now this is an interesting feature of 1980s field jackets. I think actually beginning around 1975, I could be wrong on that, but anyway, it's present in this jacket. And you have that obviously shaped to take a pistol. This is accessed through a, you can see the rivet for the button here, a flap in this front opening of the jacket, which has a small loop which passes around a button. Hopefully you can see that in there. You can see there's a loop of cloth here, which just unbuttons and allows you to get at the pistol pocket inside there. So it's a, a built-in way of carrying a a pistol in a concealed manner, but also from a, a safety point of view as well. I understand uh, the pistol pocket was included. So you can see that there it has a small piece of tape to stop the barrel end flopping around. And it also has the stamp on here, which we'll have a look at in close up now. Looking at the stamp in more detail here, you can see MDI, which is obviously Ministry of the Interior. And then you have M44, the size to the right of that. The number underneath MDI, I'm not sure of, but could well be a contract number. And then to the right, you have 2Y. Now, Y is the letter code from 1988, as far as I'm aware. And 2 would show this was made in the second quarter of 1988. So quite a late production, obviously getting towards the end of the existence of the DDR. So that's the front of the internals of the jacket. We'll start moving this around now and have a look at some of the other details. Looking at the right-hand side here, if I lift the arm out of the way, you can see behind the pistol pocket, we do have the bag there for the breast pocket. You can see the internal details, the strengthening piece here where the foliage loop is stitched on. So you have an extra thickness of cloth there. And then you have the bag for the arm pocket there made of a much heavier material, as you can see. And you can see the internal detail of the cuff here, which is obviously adjusted in, but you can see the strengthening piece of the thin mesh-like cloth sewn around there with the rivets for the buttons passing through that. Up on the shoulder, you can see the laces coming through here, which attach the shoulder board onto the shoulder up there. Looking at the back, we have a hanging tab here in the collar, as you can see there. And we have the size there of M44, which is my size as it happens. And if we turn the collar up here, you can see the buttons stitched into the collar here, small metal buttons. These, of course, allow a collar liner to be worn with this field jacket. Turn that back down again. And then another feature to note, obviously we have some more stamping here. We have the that contract, what I believe is contract number again, and then M44, M44, the sizing again stamped in. We actually have it under the arm here as well. Missed that on the, the way around looking at various features. We do have, have a draw cord at the waist, which is stitched in at this side. We'll see when we move this round, you can adjust in the waist on the other side. And we'll see that in just a moment. And finally, looking at the left-hand side of the internal details here, there's nothing more to see on the arm really. If I lift this out of the way, you can see we have more of those white ink stamps. And then down here, we have the draw cord I mentioned before, which is simply sewn off at this end to the side seam of the jacket there and runs in this channel across the back. And that can just be pulled to tighten this in and then tied off, meaning it could be adjusted for the wearer and left, which makes a lot of sense. Very, very simple and quite effective. It's just a piece of herringbone tape stitched in there. As I say, a simple element of the design, but functional. 
So lower the arm down there. That's the details of the internals of this jacket. So there we are. I hope you found it interesting looking at this. Aside from some of the earlier items in my collection, I'd say this is one of the more interesting items in my collection of East German kit. Not particularly large collection, but as I say, this is one of the more interesting items in that collection. It's obviously a relic from that very late period in the DDR, 1989, 1990, and obviously a very late period in the Cold War, really the end of the Cold War as well in many respects. So quite an interesting uh, artifact of that time period. And I, I like it, I say it's from that point of view, it's historically interesting to me, and it's been very nice to be able to make a video talking about this. And I do hope you found it interesting as well. If you have found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And obviously, if you hit the little bell down below, you'll be alerted when I upload future videos. And as said previously, there should be more of those coming out in the not too distant future. I'm going to try to get into a bit more of a, a regimen of uploading videos a couple of months, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. Hopefully you'll be around to see those other videos. And hopefully this has been of interest, as I say. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.